morning, Amul. Welcome to the Forum of India's top founders by BW Disrupt. So I have a few questions for you. Let's start. Studies show that only 20% of startups are able to survive more than 5 years and uh, only 8% manage to survive beyond 10 years. India has seen a lot of startups shut down last year. So do you think are we on the right track despite of all of this to become a startup hub in the world? Uh, definitely yes. So of course, you know, uh, uh, initial turmoil is kind of essential for almost all the industries. Uh, but yes, I would say definitely we are going to be a startup hub, uh, especially when you know uh, there, there's a different uh, there's a different wave right now. So uh, coming up of the inc uh, ecosystems and the infrastructure right now, uh, coming up uh, with you know uh, details like star uh, the, the series like Shark Tank, where now Avita and those kind of startup terms have become household terms, a common discussion now. Now you can have uh, you, you can see teenagers and you can see actually younger people sitting on a child break uh, discussing startups so definitely yes there's a degree of growth uh, talking about you know uh, closing down of the startups that you mentioned so uh, yes like i said initial turmoil is always essential but then that's where the learning curve comes in uh, so definitely rushing for scaling or rushing for the uh, for, for the growth of a startup uh, specifically the funding part uh, so these are a little complicated and need to be handled uh, very precisely. Okay. Specifically, uh, in our ecosystem, funding is not actually the winning moment. It's actually the starting line. So when once you get funding, uh, that, that that actually decides where you go from that part. And most of the times what happens is, you know, this slight deviation, the focus of the goals or, or the focus of the goals, they get distracted when you know when you have a lot of money coming in. So that's definitely one of the reasons. Another uh, really important factor which comes in uh, for the sustainability of startups, uh, that would be the coordination and chemistry between the founders. So how how back they go, how they, uh, I mean, what, what kind of relation they share, are they like friends first and then entered into the startup or they already had a startup and they became professionally acquainted and then the friendship developed. So, so that kind of relationship is really important because uh, like you said, you know, only 8% of uh, the startups survive. I would attribute a lot of a, a majority of reason for the internal turmoil and the internal, you know, issues, disagreements. As long as those are handled properly and you, you ensure a right direction uh, for the startup, you ensure a cohesive uh, interaction. Uh, between the core team, between the founders, and of course, you share your vision, and the vision extends to the team who's running at the ground, who's actually executing it. So that is uh, definitely indispensable. All right, that was quite insightful. So my next question to you would be: How has the past year been for your company? How has it been doing? Uh, that would be quite amazing, I would say. So I'm really pleased uh, to share that. So we've been doing almost, you know, we're basically doubling down. So it's almost a, a 2x growth year on year for the last three years, I would say, at least. Okay. Uh, so there are a lot of potential growth. Even now we feel that, you know, we're not uh, doing the best in terms of efficiency. We can do much better. Uh, so definitely, yes, you know, a lot of pipeline molecules, a lot of research going on. Uh, other than that, you know, taking us to the global level, because when it comes to nutraceuticals, especially in, case, in terms of healthcare, you cannot scale well unless you have your global standards, you know, uh, the standards that are followed in India. Then you have US standards and you have European standards and then you have Middle East. So unless you take yourself to uh, to an equal level, wherein you can be, you know, where, wherein you can be accepted with ease and convenience and trust yeah. to all these markets, uh, you know, uh, global expansion is really different. So you have to start from the scratch, you know, right from the first day, the fundamentals have to be really strong. Okay. Once you build that kind of quality, which is acceptable uh, in all these markets, uh, expansion is easier. And that's what we are doing. So we are actually, you know, in the process of getting approvals for US, Canada, Malaysia, uh, Nepal, and the neighboring countries, and definitely Middle East. So on that note, I'd like to ask you, what are your particular future goals for your company in the coming five years? Coming five years, I would say definitely to get into the chains. We are already uh, we are already with Apollo. We are already with Max, Indigo. Uh, these are like the big chains that we ventured into in the last one year. 
uh, other than that to come up with newer and better products uh, right kind of compositions the newer molecules uh, the good uh, i would say the, the right kind of formulations that impact uh, the best in nutraceuticals uh, the major challenge is the trust so consumers don't feel that they can have a they, 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 can, they observe a noticeable you know difference so a lot of times people will you know uh, they, they'll consume some calcium supplements or let's say some other supplements omega this that but since it's not actually visible and it's not noticeable to them the trust issues are there okay. and that usually is attributed to the clinical dose because in terms of nutraceuticals, you're just filling in the deficiency, right? It's, it's, it's already a deficient body. It's not a treatment. It's not a cure. It's basically something that you're kind of you're building your body reserves, which are depleted because of the lifestyle, because of uh, not so good eating habits, uh, because of, you know, the way we consume uh, uh, our food. Uh, because, you know, if you go like 20 years back, two, two decades back, uh, it's a well-known fact that you know the overall purity, the adulteration, uh, it was much lesser than, than it is today. And you know, with the addition of processed foods and all. So it's really not easy to first uh, you know uh, notice that. For example, I'll give you an example. So if you start taking, let's say, omega or calcium, for the first at least three, four, or even up to six to eight weeks, uh, the, the dose that you're taking, it's just you know kind of uh, covering up your de depleted reserves in the body. So you'll actually not see a major difference. So it takes a lot of consistency. And that's where the, the, you know, especially this generation, the younger generation who are like quite aware. So this is a generation of less patient people. They want like instant, uh, you know, solutions, instant uh, kind of, you know, uh, effects and, and solutions. So, so they're not able to wait for six weeks or eight weeks and have the patience and the consistency. So we try to simplify the doses to make sure that you know once a day is easy instead of going like twice a day, twice a day. Definitely, uh, patient compliance will uh, will get hit. The consumer compliance get hit. So they use the doses. So we try to make sure that we have one solution for each body part, for each body system, and that one uh, single dose covers all the different molecules that are needed to actually you know build up that. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Amol. It was lovely talking to you. Nice meeting you. Thank <laughs> you.